it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about paganism within Abram's family. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses because, of course, Satan and Google, they don't want you to know the gospel, so just jump through their hoops, hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses, and let's get started. Now, it is Christmas today. You guys know that I don't celebrate Christmas, but I have my baby it's cold outside shirt on because it's my stand up to a social justice warrior shirt because they're like, oh, this song is terrible. So anyway, that's why I'm wearing it. But anyway, let's talk about Tara and Abram. And the reason that we need to talk about this is because God is about to promise something to Abram that we kind of just overlook. We're just like, mm, okay, whatever. Great. Let's finish out the story. And then we see Abram. He is he has a zillion servants. He has men that can prepare for battle on behalf of him. He has an audience with Pharaoh. And it's just like, how does this guy have this kind of clout? Like, if he's just some rando dude that just has a bunch of animals, how does he have this kind of clout with people? Like, this doesn't make sense. And I began studying Abram's name because we know that Abram went from Abram and then God changed his name to Abraham. We haven't gotten to that part in the story yet, but we all know this. Just like Saul of Tarsus became Paul, God always changes your name. You go from Jacob to Israel. So I started studying about Abram and I was like, you know, it's really weird that his name means exalted father. That's just like a weird thing to name your kid. And... You know, Joshua was not joking when he says that Tara served other gods. Like, that is the understatement of the century, of the millennia, because uh, Tara was doing a whole lot more than just simply, like, creating idols and, like, worshiping them. Like, oh, you're in a Chinese restaurant and there's a Buddha statue with a bunch of dollar bills taped to it. No. No, 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 no. It is way crazier than you could even imagine. Now, remember, if the Bible is true, then the claims of the Bible are going to be true about the the people who are not worshiping God. So they need to be involved in idolatry. They need to be involved in like demonic Nephilim type worship. And we already see in my video about mermaids and the Nephilim after the flood that the Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, absolutely, they were into a whole bunch of witchcraft and garbage and that backs up the claims of the bible and we know that it's not that they're ripping each other off it's just this is the evidence that backs up the claims of the bible and we know that people they built the tower of babel they wanted to go to war against god we know that god scattered their their languages and they went all over the earth with the same stories and like switched some of the little details around but it's the same story because these things actually happened and you have to understand that the Sumerians were not stupid they were brilliant they really knew their stuff so you can't just be like oh these people they're so smart but when it comes to religion they're just idiots drooling idiots no these people knew what they were talking about and they were seeing demonic stuff go on now are all the facts necessarily going to be correct no of course because there was like a political aspect to a lot of this for kings to keep their throne and we see that tara also engaged in some of this behavior to not to a lesser extent, but to an extreme extent. And the only way that you can figure this out is if you understand Sumerian religion. And while I'm not an expert, I do have some background at a university level in ancient Mesopotamia. So let me just tell you of a story about a god named Inki. And if you remember from my mermaids video that I put up there, Inki is a god of creation, and he creates Enkidu, who is the companion of Gilgamesh, which we already talked about, Gilgamesh is Nimrod. So Enki creates Enkidu, and he's this like wild man. No, but Enki, he has these horns, you always know it's Enki because he wears these like goat horns, and he has a symbol which is both goat and fish. We see that in the constellation Capricorn, the goat fish, that's Inky. And Inky is all about virility and sex and like, look at what I've created, I'm so fertile. He's all about like 
some really nasty sex stuff. So he marries this woman. They have this like cosmic wedding and you see this throughout all Gnostic Gospels, which we will be getting to. Uh, you see it all over the place, like this coming together of man and woman. And um, Inky, he's known as Ea in Babylonian religions, Inky in Sumerian. Inky marries Ki or Ninershog, depending on which culture you're in. And she is the earth. And the way that he does this is he's at a dry riverbed and he ejaculates, filling up the riverbed with his waters. So that was the marriage between the earth and the waters. He's on some gross stuff. But Inky is kind of a lesser god and he has a grandfather named Abzu. Now Abzu, if you remember, that is where the fish hybrid men lived in the Abuzu. And that's where... Uh, Iridu was built and it was like, oh, this is where Inky's temple was. It was over this Abzu. Now, the reason that his temple was at the Abzu, where his grandfather Abzu lived, is because Abzu got upset with the lesser gods and he felt like they were, they were making too much noise. So he was going to go to war with them and Inky puts a spell on this river god, Abzu, and he makes him fall asleep. And that's when he like takes over and now he's the god of the waters. Not only of the earth, but also of the waters. And he's again, all about virility and he's in charge and all of this stuff. There's something else that you need to know. And Inky is the god associated with wisdom and magic and incantations and doing all sorts of like tricks. And he is a, uh, not a good guy. He's He's pretty terrible. So he's all into witchcraft and the occult. Now, how does that bring us to Tara or any of Abraham's family? Well, I think it's really strange that Tara, he created gods. He fashioned false idols. And not only that, but you have to remember who buys idols, who is the one giving them racks on racks on racks. It's the government. The government officials are the ones that are paying for all of the idols that go up in temples and things like that. So Tara is super wealthy and all Jewish tradition, history, whatever, always says that Tara and Nimrod, they were like this. So Nimrod's the king and Tara is his like idol maker. But you can see that it, Tara was really trying to make himself to be Inky. He was trying to make like a political power play by showing like, oh, I'm Inky in the flesh. Here I am. So that he could also be worshipped just like Nimrod wanted to be worshipped like God. So we see that Tara in Hebrew means wild ibex or wild goat. So you have the horns. But remember, Tara also had a father named Nahor and he also named his, his son, Nahor. So his father's Nahor, his son's Nahor. And Nahor in Hebrew is a pun because Nahor in Hebrew has N-H-R in English and they don't use any sort of vowels. So depending on how you pronounce it, it can mean either um, somebody who snores like you're sleeping or it can mean river. So it's a pun. I thought that was a very strange name to name your son, somebody who's snorting or snoring, but also a pun being a river. But remember, who is Inky's grandfather? Uh, Abzu, he's a father of the rivers. What does Inky do? He puts a spell on him to make him fall asleep where he's snoozing, snorting. Do you not see like the parallels? But then we see that Tara, Again, he's all about building himself up to be like a god. So his first son is Haran, and that means mountaineer or mountain. So he's creating the earth, like, look at this monument to myself. Look how strong I am. I'm going to be like God, like building up this tower, this mountain where he's going to go to war with God. And then you have his son, Nahor. So you have the rivers or you have the earth and you have the waters. So he's showing not only do I create the earth, but I also sustain it with my rivers or your semen. And then he has a third kid and it's like, well, I have three sons. Look how exalted I am. I'm the exalted father. So you can see that Abram comes from a family of idolatry and extreme narcissism, but also political power, which is why 
Abram is able to get an audience with Pharaoh to build up armies. He's super wealthy. There's not even enough land for him and Lot to live side by side. Tara is not just a politician. He's not just an idol worker. He is like neck deep in the occult. And who knows whatever he conjured to make up Enkidu for the companion of Nimrod. He was into some really weird witchcraft and occult stuff. So just remember that when you think like, why is Abraham doing these things? Remember, he lived with a crazy narcissist. So he's probably kind of insecure, even though he's rich. So something to think about. I'd love it if you'd like, subscribe, and share. And make sure you do check out a playlist because we have to put on the full armor of God every single day to stand strong against the schemes of the devil. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.